Hey Aquarians, and welcome back to Deku Tarot and to your February 2020 reading. So let's get right into this. Um, I was sitting in your energy, kind of um, connecting with you guys, and I pulled a couple cards before the video started just to see where you guys were at right now and where we're going to be at going into February here. Also, happy birthday to you all. Happy birthday to all my February Aquarians as well as my January ones. Thank you guys again for all of your support. And if you haven't, check out your 2020 yearly read as well um, as making sure you're subscribed. I appreciate it, guys. Um, but let's get into this because the first two cards or the only cards that I really got um, of where you guys are coming out of and what's been happening with you and your emotions is Three of Swords and the Seven of Swords. So there's been unexpected heartbreak. You're carrying and harboring maybe even a hidden heartbreak yourself right now. It probably feels, I don't know, I'm getting the sense that you guys feel very alone in this. And I don't know, there's a sadness there and you might be hiding it or trying to hide it really well, but um, something has ended or something has really really hurt you here in the past um there's really no two ways about a three of swords kind of energy there's been a lot of sorrow there's been sadness but with the seven of swords i do feel there's this quiet sense of hiding this where you guys are at and maybe a lot maybe not all of you are so much hiding it but for some of you it feels like there was unexpected heartbreak and you really don't know how to deal with the pain. You don't really know why this is coming up, but it is. And it's coming up painfully. You don't really want to talk to people about it, I think, either. So anyways, let's let's go off from there because that's an interesting place to be in as we enter February. But let's look at your um, energy for the month here. We're going to use, we're actually going to continue using this deck. I want to use the Aquarian Tarot deck for you guys as it is your month this is your video and a lot what a lot of people are calling you know the beginning of the age of aquarius the real beginnings here i think that this year will usher us into your time capricorn energy in 2020 has us putting in the efforts where we want wherever we want things we can't just expect them to fall into our lap is what i mean by that work has to be done for us to get our rewards and I think that we're kind of getting slapped here in the beginning of the month or at least something from January end of January it could even go back a lot farther but for some reason it's come up and with all the eclipses can we really be surprised we just had one the past month and by this point we'll have had your new moon in Aquarius for most of you watching this and that'll be a really great new beginning, I think. Maybe it'll help you release a lot of this, confront this. But let's look at your energy. I haven't really gotten anything here yet. Your energy in the beginning versus your energy in the end of the month. Ooh. by the end of the month one card please <laughs> okay it's your energy at the beginning of the month three of cups might be having a good time celebrating or for a lot of you to deal with that three of swords and I, I can't help but notice that this seems to have a lot going on there's two threes here and then there's the seven of swords Three of Cups, Three of Swords, Seven of Swords, something that seemed really fun at first might have ended up kind of hurting you at the beginning of this month, at the beginning of February here. Um, so you might be trying to, you know, even, even mask it by going out, partying, saying this, saying that, pretending like you're having a really good time. But I just feel like this is the front of it. This is the front of your energy as we go into February. And this is really what's behind it. Don't want to pick at a scab, don't want to pick at a wound here, but you do end the month, and we'll figure that out. You do end the month though with the Seven of Wands, fighting for something. For me, when the Seven of Wands shows up, you've picked up your wand and you've started fighting for some type of cause for yourself, for standing up for yourself in areas where you have felt hurt, where you have felt attacked, where you have felt 
why me? Why is it always me? Why does it always have to be this way? And I think that a lot of you are going to feel personally attacked almost in a way by how things are in February because you're like, this is my birthday month. What the hell? And this stuff is going on and I'm having these feelings and I can't believe that something that I thought was so good ended up hurting me so bad and I think that we I feel like we've been touching or getting to this point for quite a while um, a lot of you guys actually I remember when I had a read recently I remember it was a couple months back and some people were really upset by how the message came through but I don't pick the cards I'm a channeled reader so this is your energy coming through your universal messages I have no personal vendettas or hate for Aquarians I love you guys I have a lot of really great Aquarians in my life I don't have problems with them, so um, I have no personal vendetta against you, but whoever connects with these readings is obviously, you guys have obviously been going through something this year, and it's really, 2020 is going to make you really look at some things, and it's going to feel uncomfortable. It's not going to feel good, and you're going to try to mask it this month. That's a really major thing here, but let's continue to look at this. Um... It's got your focus and your goals. Aquarius. Ooh. I don't think you're going to like this. Um, not, not that I don't like the messages because I think that as a reader that focuses on getting you on your highest and most fulfilling path, your, your best path forward, the one that's connected to your higher self, your best possible life, the messages are always going to be a little bit more challenging. That's just who I am as a reader. And if you're looking for a light, lovey-dovey, fake thing, I'm sure that there are plenty of other people on YouTube to give you that. But I focus on self-growth. I focus on getting you where you want to be, getting you to the life that you want to be living. And that's never a walk in the park, is it? <laughs> um, let's pull one more for your... Or actually... Yeah, let's pull one more for your goals. Oof. Some of you are getting, you know what, I can't ignore that all these cards came up behind it. Sometimes I, I'm like too many cards, but they just really feel a different type of way today. So let's leave him over there. Your goals, the first two out here, Eight of Swords, Star Reversed. You're unwilling to pass, I mean, or up until now, I think you've been kind of unwilling to see that you've lodged yourself in a situation where... We believe the dark is the light and the light is the dark, you know, something that is, we believe something is good for us when it's not. Because when the star is reversed, I can't help but believe that there is a type of, there's a sense of delusion about our goals. Could also be pessimism in a different kind of sense here and that could be what's kind of holding you back. You don't realize that you're not fully in something. But it's because you've also been hurt by that same thing. I think a lot of this, a lot of this reading is going to have to stem from these two cards. And I know that maybe we're not excited about that, but we're going to have to look at these wounds and why they're there. Because Seven of Swords is a card of hidden, hidden agendas often, you know, the fox in the hen house. But it also signifies that we're hiding these swords we're hiding something and that something is pain and it has really whatever we're hiding has it's our pain or whatever we're hiding has actually hurt us and we don't want people to know about it that's obvious i don't know it's almost and i don't want to say it's like an air sign thing but i find that the signs that mostly put up these fronts put on a mask where they don't need to um, and maybe it's because, you know, well, it's air sign because you guys are kind of more involved in the social aspects, in the intellect, in the communication, in your, again, you're the humanitarian sign, you're fixed air. And in a lot of sense, this reading kind of reminds me in a strange way of Libra a couple months back, or even actually the reading for January had some of this element in it and their 2020 read and that it kind of says, you know, is the mask really worth how you feel behind it? <sighs> that one kind of, mm -hmm. I don't know, there's arrogance in this and we're not really willing to see 
that this own arrogance, our own ego in this situation has tied us to a situation that really isn't working out. Eight of Pentacles reverse, Four of Swords reverse. And it's almost like, <laughs> when I get the Eight of Pentacles reversed, it's an energy of um, greed. Again, it's the greed. It's the mask. I'll keep working at this even if it's not really going anywhere. Four of Swords is impatience. You're working at something with so much impatience and you're not seeing that, again, the mask isn't really worth it. So stop working towards that. I think we need to really get a bird's eye view. And it's interesting because I think a lot of other signs as they entered your season, my daily suddenly got this bird's eye view of everything. And yet you guys seem to actually be still right here instead of up where I think a lot of other people are able to see things in your season. So maybe talk to other people about the bigger picture. Because Four of Swords Reverse indicates that things are... I don't know, whenever I get the Four of Swords reverse, you're not getting the rest. You're not taking a moment. You're not taking a break to really look at what you're working at, especially with the Eight of Pentacles reverse. And you need to take a minute and really see, whoa, 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 is this worth it? Because once you do, because again, this is your focus and your goals this month. These are the cards that came up here. Five of Swords. Where have I been left after this battle now? What do I actually have? And when you look around, what's no longer there anymore? people, money, respect for yourself in a lot of ways, I think, because you didn't really listen. You didn't listen when the mask started crumbling here, when things started falling apart. You just kept trying to put a patch on it. And I just think, you know, out of, again, you know, this is the way I want things to be. This is the way I want things to look. Well, sometimes things tend to change in a way that we don't want them to. It's happened to all of us. I don't have any Aquarian in my chart and I know that it's happened to me. Where suddenly we're at this point of a loss. There's a type, there's a feeling of, again, humiliation if we don't kind of get our ducks in a row on our goals here. Because your goals are what are driving you into the ground, honestly. Because this is these are the cards that came up for your goals this month. So that's where you're at. But again, all of these cards, if you flipped them... Every single one of them, if you flipped them over, it would be positive. So it's about changing your perspective. And I think once you get right with here and here, once you decide to remove yourself from a self-imposed prison. It's a word I'm looking for here, but I can't really get it. Uh, a place of self-delusion. So, and again, a self-imposed prison, you have deluded yourself to about a situation that, you know, it's almost like, I don't know, you see it as one thing, but like, it, it has a lot to do, I think, where it's tied into ego. And I think that this Leo full moon this month, this moon in your opposite sign where, with Leo, which has a lot to do about ego and relationships because it's seventh house, your opposite sign for you, it's going to bring up a lot of, I think, revelations there. And what's really good for you. And I don't necessarily think it's going to feel very good. This is going to be... 2020 is going to be a tough year. Let's just get there. But... Let's pull a card actually for each week. Just as a real quick thing here. Before we get any deeper. See where these things... See where the pieces fall. Yeah, this is a month where we have to let go of our ego here in a situation and really just let go of those egotistical hangups on a situation. It's like if you're wrong about something and it hasn't been working out, it's just time to admit it. I think it would be a lot easier than trying to, you know, carry this burden, especially in the first week where emotionally you're also carrying that as well, obviously. There's a lot of emotions, a lot of pain pent up in you that you're kind of like shutting off. And Aquarians, I know some people like to say you're cold, you don't have feelings sometimes, but um, 
I mean, it is a thing where you guys can compartmentalize a feeling and not deal with it. Just not deal with it. Not You know, it's just not there anymore. And I think that a lot of this comes... A lot of this is being used in the first week here. But by the second week, we're starting to really get confused and scattered. And where are we really going? And what are my real goals? And I'm not even sure anymore. And, you know, what's really going wrong about this situation? What's really going right? There's a lot of questions and exploration that happens in that second week there of February. And we haven't even mentioned, um, we have Mercury entering Pisces on February 3rd. Which is a dreamier sign here, but it's again, I think it'll help you with your thoughts becoming a little bit more clear, especially in terms of career, especially in terms of exploring what's really going on here. Because I think a lot of this has to do with the life that you're living, the career that you're working, the things that you're doing every day. Because again, this is the sun in your sign, it's about you, but with a lot of second house activity, you know, um, and 12th house activity, you know, with all the Capricorn stuff going on all year, but then we have all the second house stuff in Pisces going on. Um, I think we have Venus, Mars, is Mars? No, Mar not Mars, Mercury um, in Pisces. Um, that's happening. We also get a Mercury retrograde, February 17th. I think it's through March 9th, March 8th or 9th, or February 16th through March 9th. I don't know. Forgive me if I'm wrong on the dates. Um, I have like different, I have like UK stuff and then I also have the US stuff. So it gets very... I get confused with the dates. That's why I always say like two different days because <laughs> I know I have a lot of followers in both places. Um, but by the third week here, four of wands reversed. Something is clearly not in harmony anymore. Something is not really working out. And yet I just feel like you're trying to put up the sticks anyways. You're trying to celebrate something and things just keep kind of falling down. The, it, it, I mean, look at how unbalanced that looks all of a sudden when you turn the four of wands upside down. Even, even the ground that it's sitting on is crooked. Like it could just slide right off. So we're going to have to look at a lot of things that aren't balanced, especially in our home, our work, our mind, body, soul, everything about us. It's like, this is kind of like your wake up call this month to say, what are you so furiously working towards in terms of your goals that are in reality, again, a mask, you know, a fake mask here. It's like a gilded mask. You know, I'm going to work towards this and this, everyone's going to be so impressed and I'm going to look this way and it's going to be amazing. And I'm not going to look like, you know, I can't give this up because I'll look like a failure, I think is where a lot of this comes from for you guys. You don't want to disappoint or, you know, feel like people will be disappointed in you. You don't want to disappoint yourself either, but something has to change here. It's like something's got to give. Because the last week there, King of Rods reverse, that is just... I do not like the King of Rods reverse energy, if I'm being honest. He is a, a, he's very stern, but he's also kind of sternly chaotic in the way he throws his fire around in his lack of control, using control to, or, you know, having a lack of control, so trying to get it so desperately. Because when I get the King of Rods upright, he's a leader, he's in control, he knows what he's doing, he's showing up the way you guys want to be showing up to the world. And now you're realizing, maybe we're not really showing up that way in the world or to ourselves about something that we really thought by now we'd be there at. But it's like, we need to look at some, we really need to look at some stuff in a deeper sense this month. Because each week holds a lot of challenge, honestly, for you. This is going to be a challenging month, and I know this is your birthday month, and we didn't want that, but... Here we are, right? So, let's get some advice. And again, these are general readings. I will do a love reading for February for all the signs, so keep an eye out for those. Um, but that's why I'm not really focusing on love and relationships. If it falls there, yes, look at it that way. Maybe looking at, you know, especially around that Leo full moon, I'm getting the sense that you guys are going to be really... Uh, trying to figure out what's going on with relationships why we can't seem to get where we want where we want you know the partnership that we want why we're here when we really want to be here it's gonna be a lot of analyzing this month let's look at advice advice oof doesn't really feel like advice in overcoming these things <laughs> getting where we want to go advice yeah but again we have to make a choice wow you have three out of four that just came out our major arcana nope one two three four and we get one more okay this is really nice 
um, and very straightforward. It's just like basically what I've been saying here. Ace of Cups reversed the tower. I mean, where's the instability? And in, especially emotionally, it's like really realizing how, you know, this is kind of destroying you from within. It's like all those, I don't know, don't be aware of having breakdowns this month. Um, and if you need help, reach out to people. You know, there's always help. There's always someone or something you can go and reach out to. As I looked up at the clock there, it said 2020 on my time. So, um... This is the year where you can receive the help that you're looking for, but it's also an awakening from within. For some of you, a spiritual awakening about where we're not satisfied in life. Because the Tower Reverse is these feelings of oppression, but I feel like, again, for me as a reader, when I see the Tower Reverse, it just feels like something has broken you, like something has shifted, changed in a massive, in a massive, massive way from within. Something has ended. A foundation that you built even within yourself, inside yourself, that you were probably holding yourself up to. So for me the standards to which you hold yourself up to especially in whatever situation is obviously tearing you down that you keep trying to prop up and i think you guys are going to be aware of this because internally there's so much emotional instability it's like boom like it just rushes out maybe you're going to have an emotional talk with somebody release it but it says you know have that cry feel those feelings let this change you from within allow yourself to release the standards and the life at to which you were holding yourself up to you have changed it's your solar return and this ain't no year to be messing around <laughs> especially with the astrology so we're making a choice Will I continue to be on the path that I'm on or will I make a choice for something more the lovers denotes that conflict between like where we're you know the different attractions the different attractions of these different paths staying here makes, makes me feel like i look this way makes me feel like i'm appearing this way to everybody makes me feel like i'm this person but if i don't choose to move forward i can't really recognize what needs to be let go of your life is asking you to change because this isn't working this is kind of just like something is crumbling this month and it started off already in this in this kind of mask i mean this is just a straight up mask right here as we've already talked about three of swords seven of swords the three of cups right over it that's a mask for your pain that you're hiding so this asks you to call really look at that be strong really look at that and say you know why does this hurt me why am i in this state and what's really contributing to this right now am i doing things that are just making this worse is the life that i'm living making this worse the choices that i'm making the path that i'm on what needs to be changed, you know, the relationship I'm in, the job that I'm in, the career path that I've chosen, something has got to give, and I can't tell you exactly what it is, again, it's a general reading, and you all are different placements of Aquarius, and have different charts and stuff, so that's why I don't like to get super specific, and if you do want to get super specific, and it's resonating, um, you can always book a private reading, and I also am doing um, $30 um, year overview reads, up until February 15th, so you can book that as well if this is, if you're feeling this. <laughs> um, the Chariot Reverse and then the Eight of Rods. I know this looks a little bit backwards, so let me move that for you guys. But the Chariot Reverse came out first. When I get the Chariot Reversed, for me, that's just that failure in not being able to carry something out and not being able to stay aligned and not being able to push forward on something. You know, maybe we were running ourselves in too many directions and it just couldn't work out. But there is a failure in something. But as you let go of that failure, that, that ship that can't sail, it's, it's like you've been trying to fix up a ship and it's just got too many holes, got too many things, it's going to sink. And this is the month where you, let, where you can let this sink peacefully. You can let all of these painful things go, have a good cry, release all this. I mean, you are an Aquarius. You're kind of known to be able to be a little bit more connected, be that, you know, fixed air sign. You know what people know you about, um, will know you for, especially, you know, even in memes and stuff. And it's time to really allow yourself to shift from within, to grow, to let go of the life that you were trying to live and open yourself up to something that really wants to come in and that you can start taking off towards better goals. It's like all of a sudden, once you let this go and you start reaching out and start, you know, reaching in new directions, you know, going for something new, a new career, a new path, something that feels better and that feeds you from within. That isn't going to take away from your heart and your soul and leave you with pain. Something that doesn't feel like it's restricting your life and oppressing you in a lot of ways. I love the Eight of Wands. This to me is opportunities abound. Moving forward, you might even be moving. Maybe even trying to make a situation work. And it's just like this whole thing here ain't working. I'm going to move. And that's very Aquarian to do as well. But I like it. 
Because that's where you start to fight. Seven of Rods was the end of the month. And if you listen to that advice, when you start fighting for your real principles and you start fighting to make change in your life and to shift here, <laughs> Eight of Wands, you're going. So Aquarius, let's pull a couple of um, oracles here. Let's pull one from the goddess, Journey to the Goddess Realm by Lisa Porter. Wow. And this is what you need to do. This is this is amazing. I love this. Wow, and I open right up to the page. So, Isis, leadership. Noble Egyptian goddess Isis is the matriarchal leader of mystery cults. <laughs> Her name means throne. When she learned the secret name of sun god Ra, she became his equal. She is powerful while also maintaining her feminine nurturing spirit. Isis generates a trusting and loving leadership that honors all. She is the great sorceress who creates harmony out of chaos. She watches over single mothers. Her Ankh symbol is, symbolizes the key to eternal life and balanced and the balanced measures of feminine and masculine energies. Goddess Isis is the master of self-agency that generates outward and connects to all. She calls you to confidently tap into your value, valuable leadership qualities. So this is again, taking on more leadership and diplomacy in your life. Okay, make, giving yourself the respect and authority in your own life. Do you respect yourself for the decisions that you made? Or would you look at you and not be that proud of you? Be the person you really want to be, the person that you can respect and that you find that other people will definitely respect and stop trying to hold up this, this gilded mask here that just isn't working. Be you and you've changed and that's okay. Take leadership over that. Take accountability over that. Um, yeah, there's like, you know, becoming a very, very much your own boss, learning. Just a lot of leadership that we're taking within our life this month. Let's pull a Halloween Oracle as well. This is amazing. And it's exactly what you need to hear. Okay. Creating through the ashes, skull of flowers. Okay. So sometimes we wish for a life different from the one we have, and that can mean radical change. Sometimes to have that life, sorry, sometimes to have that new life, everything falls apart to make it so, and that can be uncomfortable. That's where we're at here. Um, we may lose our relationships or they may change. We might lose a job, have to move house or become ill. Another thing that I kind of got for you guys, if you don't run yourself into the ground because this is stressing you out from within, you can find that you're very sick this month. Be careful. Um, I meant to mention that right in the beginning. Um, all big events that lead to a reassessment of the how of our lives. The skull of flowers illustrates that there is a sureness and yet a rawness to creating again, to starting afresh. Sometimes the universe gives us a blank slate to work from so we can build what we really want rather than just settling for less. The skull of flowers celebrates not just a kind of phoenix energy, but an energy of success and full bloom through adversity. So, big messages this month. Happy birthday, Aquarius. Do you check out your yearly reads? Definitely check out the yearly reads if you haven't. Like, I cannot stress that enough this year. Like, the astrology is too big to ignore those. Um, so check that out. Check out the readings for your sun, moon, and rise, and keep an eye out for the birthday. Um, why did I say birthday? The love readings for this month. But again, happy birthday to you all. Um, maybe that's just a little message to be like, remember to say happy birthday. But um, happy birthday, guys. Um, make sure that you subscribe. Make sure to share the video if you enjoyed it, and have a blessed birthday month. Thanks, Aquarius. See you in the dailies. See you in the monthlies. See you in the love readings. Namaste.